This is Missy Wong from the Day in the Morning Show. Hey, you guys see Missy Wong? She see lots of light, so she go check on chicken. Now she gone. I guess she flew the coop. I gotta go. See ya. Bye bye. Welcome to UFO Buster Radio. This is Manny Moonraker, and this is episode number 103. We have an interview today with author Dina Ray. Dina likes conspiracies, and she's going to take you through a few of those. But before we get started, I want to invite you guys to join UBR Truth Seekers. It is a Facebook group. Also, check out the pages Manny Moonraker, UFO Buster Radio, Instagram at Manny Moonraker, and Twitter at UFO Buster Radio because it is the way to get in touch with me if you want to come on here talk to the people if you just want to come on here and you know to the fat if you will and if you're a random rubber dicker that wants to come on here and rubber dick I guess you can if you feel like it just uh, just be yourself is all I'm saying that's all I'm trying to get to you just be yourself if you believe in something and you really feel that it is the truth of all truths then go with it Own it. Live it. Love it. If you like it, I love it. So don't forget to look at the description for all of Dina's links. And let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I have Dina Ray is on with us today. And uh, Dina, thank you for joining us at UFO Buster Radio. Well, thanks for having me, Manny. So listen, you have a, uh, a, I guess, an, an amazing background when it comes to conspiracies and uh you have a substantial interest in it why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself so that uh, we can and get to talking about some of these crazy topics oh absolutely well i am an author i am coming up on my eighth book which will be released uh, in the next week or two i write mainly about conspiracy seven of my eight books are fiction but they are jam-packed with um, popular conspiracies. And then I have one nonfiction book, which is called uh, Big Pharma, Big Agra, Big Conspiracy, again, with a conspiracy theme. Uh, I am a self-proclaimed conspiracy theorist. In other words, I um, read up on all kinds of what ifs when uh, facts are, are taken and patterns are found. I do, uh, I also write a blog with lots of conspiracy, um, theories, possible, um, side stories to main news stories, all of it. I, um, I, besides writing, I'm also a teacher. And you're also a fellow Texan. I am. I guess uh, the main question here is, how did you get into conspiracies? Well, um, I guess maybe it all, uh, it started when I was in college, but then a little bit later on, we of course had 9-11 and then, you know, the conspiracy, uh, theories, you know, back to back to questionable wars. And, um, at that point I was really starting to doubt the mainstream media and, uh, what they were telling us. So. Um, I think it took those, those two Gulf Wars to really throw me in, uh, full throttle. Yeah, that's, uh, that was some interesting conspiracies relating to 911 and all the war, all the wars that came after that. Today we have a particular topic that seems to, uh, kind of always come back every, every few months. We hear about the, uh, the Nazis, alien technology, Antarctica, and some of my listeners, whenever we talk about this topic, it kind of it kind of burns their bridges. It kind of gets right. to them because it's like, how do you make that connection? But you have done some research in that. Yes, I have. Uh, I've uh, excuse me, one second. Sorry, my dog just barked and uh, 
I'm kicking her out of the room. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I've done a, a lot of research. I I find Hitler to be one of the most fascinating evil characters of all time. The fact that he really existed and he's really true, all of that. Uh, of course, he he just uh, makes for a fascinating uh, character in, in literature. And obviously, you turn on the TV and, and all the history channels and the sci-fi channels, all of them, he's, uh, he might be dead, but he's still alive and well in, in fiction. And, um, you can't help when you start getting into Hitler, you, you can't help, uh, but also get into, uh, what he and his henchmen were up to behind the scenes. I mean, they had their fingers in so many pies, including alien technology, including secret societies, including, uh, beliefs in alien existence. He, um, is such a fascinating character that, um, it's just, you know, an endless wealth of information, uh, on, on the internet, um, on TV, in the movies. It, it just never ends. There's always something new, uh, going on from something that happened so long ago. When we look into these conspiracies and these theories and so forth, we all pretty much make up our mind as to what's really real. So, I mean, take us through it. Do, do you believe that there is an alien connection when it comes to the Nazis? Absolutely. With, uh, without a doubt, the Germans were so far ahead of the rest of the world and, uh, they had to, there had to be some reason why they thought they were superior to everyone else. Uh, you just don't get that idea because you were born in Germany and you had blonde hair and uh, blue eyes. That just seems a little too ridiculous and, and simplistic for me. Right. Uh, they, they had to have had some kind of contact. And I'm not just talking about um, the Germans of Germany. Uh, obviously, the United States, we got the Jews from Germany who helped us, of course, uh, build the A-bomb and uh what was going on in Germany that um, all of these people who live there seem to have uh, decades, if not centuries, of information ahead of the rest of us? Uh, that is the question. Um, he also, obviously, he had a lot of secret societies. And uh, the one, to me, that is the most interesting of all of them is the Vril Society. Uh, the Vril Society consisted of him and his henchmen and um, a bunch of women who were psychics and communicated with aliens. And they treated these women um, like goddesses, took everything they said um, very seriously, and they had the, you know, most advanced weaponry on the face of the planet at that time. And who knows, they might have other um, uh, weapons that we just don't know about that they hid very well that are still um, ahead of the time. Uh, critics say that Germany would have probably won the war if they could have milked it for another couple of years because their weaponry was in the infant stages, and if they could have figured out how to use them correctly, it would have been game over for all of us. And what's fascinating is that you're the second guest in probably like three weeks that's mentioned the Vril in our recent interviews. But... Um, my question is, is there anything out there that basically kind of paints the picture of how the Germans came across uh, having this ET contact and, and how that manifested? Well, there's, of course, the expedition to Antarctica. That's a big one. And then they had um, right after the, expe the expedition to Tibet, two very odd places to be going to during the middle of a war that you started in trying to take over Europe. Um, they went to Antarctica supposedly to get, um, to set up a station and to collect whale fat for soap. Uh, I don't know if that was altogether true. That just sounds kind of weird to me. Yeah. Kind of um, far. Long way to go to get whale fat. Right. Uh, they landed on a Norwegian settlement, Queen Maud, and then they renamed it, uh, set up flags all over the place. Um, the whole thing was very, very weird. 
a lot of people think that Hitler, of course, never died, and he uh, took a U-boat back to Antarctica, where he, um, you know, went in hiding for a while, and then eventually blended in with uh, Argentinians or Brazilians, whichever conspiracy you want to believe. Uh, what I think what happened when they went to Antarctica, they found the hollow earth, and they found alien technology, and they might have even communicated with aliens. Now, how they knew where to look, I'm going to guess from this Vril Society. They had these psychics who were mouthpieces for aliens during their seances. So all of this is connected. And I honestly think that there was something in Antarctica, maybe there still is something in Antarctica, that gave him the upper hand at least for a while. Yeah, that is quite interesting because uh, we've been seeing a lot of stories over maybe the last uh, year or so of so many dignitaries making trips to Antarctica, and that's kind of mm-hmm. it's kind of strange. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, later on, after World War II, of course, the United States went there big time with Admiral Byrd, and that story gets even weirder. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm sure you're uh, familiar with Operation High Jump, which happened at the end of the war. And again, we went to Antarctica as being the victors of of World War II, supposedly for training, supposedly to have a base there, supposedly to store knowledge. But again, that doesn't really hold any weight. Why would you go all the way to Antarctica right after World War II for those reasons, um, knowing that Hitler was there and Hitler was up to something. Uh, they knew something was going on there. They knew the Germans were up to something, uh, that this Operation High Jump had 4,700 men, 13 ships and 13 aircraft. Now, does that sound like that's a practical place to have a training seminar for your military? No, not at all. Not at all. I, I mean, again, what the government says it's doing and what they're really doing We'll never know for sure, but supposedly this bird publicly said there was a hollow earth, publicly said there was a cavern that was about 30 miles deep into the earth, publicly said there was an earth inside of the earth, and uh, he even wrote a journal describing all of this, and and the government removed the journal, so we don't get to see the journal. Um, We just, you know, got a few news clippings of what he said to reporters in South America. Uh, again, an, another mystery surrounding Antarctica, which, of course, stems from Hitler and his goons. So one theory that I heard regarding the Nazis and why they ended up in Antarctica was that they kind of formed a, an alliance with the uh, the United States in order to, I guess, uh, share some of that alien technology. Is there anything in your research that kind of that speaks to that? Absolutely. Uh, many people call the United States of America the Fourth Reich. Many, um, we have cut a lot of deals with Germans. We've got Operation uh, Paperclip is probably one of the most famous where we didn't uh, prosecute uh, hundreds if not thousands of Germans for the sake of bringing them to our country and filling us with all kinds of knowledge. Um, so I, I, that conspiracy theory holds a lot of weight. Uh, I think, I honestly don't think that Hitler died in Germany. I think he escaped and I think we knew about it and we let him live out his days. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, unanswered questions and those Nuremberg trials were just for show. So when you, when you look at all these conspiracy theories, especially the ones that deal with the whole Nazi connection, do these tend to kind of, does the Nazi connection tend to branch out into other conspiracies, uh, to show like a wider spread of influence? Oh, a- absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh, again, when we're talking about, uh, Roswell, for example, an American, um, happening, you know, supposedly, Aliens landed in Roswell. The whole thing was covered up into some kind of, uh, you know, weather balloon, all of that nonsense. Mm-hmm. Well, again, I believe that, you know, these aliens were, were familiar to Germans and, um, we, along with Nazi doctors, 
got to examine them, got to examine the craft. And right after Roswell, bam, all of a sudden, United States of America has got all of these uh, cool weapons. It's like the timing was just too coincidental. And I do believe the Germans, like you are alluding to, helped us. I did hear a few stories about the uh, the Roswell incident being connected to German technology. And it seems to be a hot topic recently. But how does how does the regular guy, how does the, the blue collar guy make that connection? Because what, what, what I seem to come across a lot is that... When you read some of these conspiracies, and, and they really do kind of tend to branch out into others, and they, they keep on to they propagate, you know, and they feed each other. Yep. How does the regular person get through all of that and get to a place where what they're reading, they can feel comfortable that that is as close to the truth as they're going to get? You know, that's a great question. I, I wish I actually had a, an answer because conspiracy theory is exactly – like you you said it is, it's one link leads to another link, leads to another link, leads to another link. You know, before it cl- before you know it, um, it's three o'clock in the morning. Um, right. And that's, for, <laughs> you know, um, the average Joe doesn't have time for that. Um, I, I do it because I'm interested in it. I do it because I write novels. Um, that's my motivation. But most people, they just want to go to work. They want to hang out with their family and they want to turn on the news and try to pretend that what they're listening to is true. Um, I guess there's just too much information to start, you know, I mean, we just don't have the time to be going through a, a, uh, the news with the fine comb and pulling these reporters stories apart. So right now, the media is winning in brainwashing most of America. They're just going to accept what they say and um, move on and go on with their life and, you know, try to pay off their student loans and, you know, all of that, try to save for retirement and the hack with it. So today, guess- do you see in the, let's say in the media right now, we know we have plenty of stories about what's happening in politics, but do you see any of these conspiracy theories being played out within the media today? Uh, absolutely. I, I think that Hitler was kind of like a dress rehearsal, uh, per se for, uh, one world government. I really do. And that's still going on today. There's, there's going to be a takeover and I, I feel that it's going to be a lot sooner than it is later that may involve, uh, aliens that will definitely involve those who have benefited from alien information. And, we're, uh, most of us are blind to that. Others of us have a clue, but we can only do so much. Um, anybody who gets out of line, who are, who is in the so-called in, in crowd ends up dead. And, uh, we're just, you know, we're kind of subject right now to what we listen to. Uh, I thank God for the internet because there are all kinds of voices that, um, if you look, you can hear, but, um, we still got a long ways to go right now. Uh, let's be honest. There's really just kind of two realms of thought we got going on. We've got the, you know, conservative Fox news type of thought, and we've got the liberal, uh, CNN type of thought. And we don't really have anything in between that. And I, I honestly think that both, both, uh, of those news places have the same agenda anyway, but that's besides the point. Um, we don't have news like we used to have news 40, 50 years ago. We used to have reporters who would just report the news. They wouldn't insert their political opinions about everything. We just got the news, and we don't have that anymore. So when you look at this, uh, I guess, this banter going back and forth within the news for, I guess, for the sake of the public, um, it almost seems like all of that is really insignificant when you, you you throw in all these conspiracy theories. Absolutely. I mean, you know, um, one channel, you know, one it's kind of like one channel versus the other channel. And they're always, you know, this reporter on CNN said this and this reporter on Fox said this and the president. You know what? Who really cares? What is going on right now? Uh, for example, um you know, a few years ago, we had all these heads of state go to Afghanistan. 
Now, we've been in Afghanistan for, what, 16, 17 years already? Mm-hmm. Why? I, the reasoning to be in Afghanistan from Bush, then Obama, and now Trump is ridiculous. It makes zero sense. We're a safer country if we're in Afghanistan? I don't think so. But um, a few years ago, we've had, you know, a dozen heads of state went to a cave in Afghanistan. No one knows why. A lot of people are speculating that there's a Vimana inside the cave. And, of course, we're not allowed to know about it. Well, why is everyone, why are these heads of state going to some remote cave? I mean, what is inside of it? And that's not a story. That's something that you have to find out, you know, through a coast to coast AM type of show or a, a gay, uh, a news article, something of the alternative nature. And, uh, meanwhile, you know, oh, Trump tweeted this. Oh, you know, blah, blah, blah said this. Who really cares? We've got a big story that's going on and, uh, you know, the news is, is playing, you know, little call each other names games and it's just going on all the time. And I, I'm honestly thinking that this childish, uh, banter that we call the news now is a distraction for all of us so that we don't know what's really going on. I think there's a lot of people listening right now that actually agree with you. That there is definitely some kind of distraction happening. So in your infinite amount of research into conspiracies, how do you view what's happening with this whole, you know, alien connection to our planet? Well, I, I don't know what the aliens want with us. That is obviously there's a whole bunch of conspiracy theories just on that alone. Right. But they are definitely influencing how we're running things. Um, of course, some people believe that we weren't evolving fast enough. And then they came down to earth, uh, as the fallen angel stories. And they, you know, modified us genetically so that we could advance quicker. Um, those are some of the stories. Some, some people say we're kind of like a zoo to them. We, they like to observe us. Um, other people say, that there's intergalactic war going on and um, Earth is one of the spoils to the victor. Um, you know, there's all kinds of uh, stories. Some some people say, of course, that they're already here. The reptilians, of course, are known for shape-shifting and they take the uh, faces of royalty and heads of state all the time and they are uh, influencing the direction the world is going. Uh, I don't, of course, have the answer, but I honestly think that, I mean, I'm a, I'm a Christian. Don't get me wrong. I, you know, my, my number one belief is in God, but it doesn't say in the Bible that humans are the only creations that God made. So, um, I def, I think that there are aliens. There's too many alien stories. Not everybody can be lying. Not everybody can be crazy. There's got to be some truth to all of this. And um, we're, of course, kept in the dark. Yeah, I would imagine that um, the realization of other civilizations could be quite significant for some people to the point where um uh, might drive them a little mad. Right. I, I mean, I, I also, you know, some of the other, the, some of the things that I'd like to point out is, um like, for example... Um, some of the things that ISIS has done, okay, besides the, you know, torture and all that, they like to wipe out ancient um, history in museums. Now, why is that? What are they afraid of? Why, why are they wiping out artifacts that are thousands of years old? Again, is there something else going on that we don't know about? Is there some other reason why they are in existence? Um that just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, we've got a lot. We've got a lot of proof on this on this earth what has maybe happened in the past. But then every time we get close, something happens. It gets destroyed. It gets ruined. It gets lost. I mean, look at Alexandria for example. I mean, what is going on? Why are we constantly every time we get a little bit closer to finding out where our origins are? Something happens. And um, I just, 
you know, I'm, I'm really starting to think that they're, we're getting set up here for something. So do you think if the Germans would have won the war, that things would be different in that, in that respect? You think we'd know a little more? <laughs> no, they wouldn't have. They would have. It would have probably been much worse. I, I don't know if you've, there's a TV show that actually, on uh, Amazon, that actually, that's the whole premise of the show, that the Germans won the war and they took over, uh, America. And of course, the Japanese have the West Coast and the Germans have the, the East Coast and then the Midwest. Um, and no, I don't, I don't think that they, would be a better deal by any means. They were very um, obvious about censorship. I mean, in America, we pretend that there is no censorship. We we pretend that we have a, a First Amendment right, and um, we have all of these freedoms um, that we think we have anyway. And um, if we if the Nazis were running things, you wouldn't have your show. I wouldn't have my books. I mean, let, we got to be realistic. If it wasn't in line with praising their direction, their agenda, we'd be gone. And I, I think that Europe is now kind of going in that direction. We're, um, so far, we're somewhat protected, but uh, I know that there are books that are banned in England. I, um, I my uh, my book, the the bestseller, is not allowed to be sold in Germany because it oh, has really? a it has a swastika on the cover. Okay. I was told to change my cover or they wouldn't sell it. Uh, there's already a lot of censorship going on in Europe. And uh, if we're going to follow the European model, pretty soon we're going to have it too. Well, you know, in a way I can understand that the swastika really does not have a, uh, a positive meaning behind it. So I can see why some countries might want to censor that. Um, but it does have historical meaning, right? Well, it it's actually a sign from Sanskrit days. Hitler didn't invent that symbol. He stole it. Uh, he, well, he kind of it. ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got me there. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so you got your book. And so into your work, you, you, you write fictional work. Uh, most of it is fictional. But you kind of incorporate all of these... Uh, conspiracies and, and you tell a story. Um, take us through that. Well, um, again, I take a conspiracy theory, like you said, and, and make a story, uh, about it. In my, in my latest, it's again, it, it takes place. It flips around from modern day to, uh, 1947 and it talks about the Roswell crash, talks about area 51, which used to be Groom's Lake. And my story is called Broom Lake. And, um, it talks about how we took, you know, how we took Warner Von Braun and he led up NASA. Well, in my book, my general takes the top geneticists from uh, Nazi Germany and along with the aliens found at Roswell creates hybrid, hybrid human beings. And um, again, it goes from there. And uh, a lot of World War II conspiracy, a lot of genetic uh, research was uh, brought into it a lot of um, weaponry, all of it. Uh, and then the second book will come out next week that goes into more about the Nazis, more about hollow earth, more about deals that they may have struck with other aliens. Um, a lot about the real society, which to me is one of the most bizarre secret societies I've ever uh, researched. The, the leader, Maria Orsic, no one ever even found her body. Some people think that she went uh, up into Elder Elderbon and um, in uh, a time capsule the Nazis invented. Um, I mean, yes, it's fiction, but no, it's not at the same time. And um, I just hope, you know, that that of course, number one, people find the books entertaining, but I also hope that they start uh, getting more interested in. Um, the stuff that's not in the history books. So do you think that maybe the real might still be something that's active today? That's a great question. And I've, that's one thing I walked away uh, after, after researching and wondering, I mean, could it be uh, Maria 
Orsic and then her, her other girls, uh, supposedly might have been part alien themselves. They supposedly would talk in these various languages, uh, like uh, Babylonian, Akkadian, all this other stuff at these meetings. We don't have a lot of uh, research on it because they were so secret. But she wasn't an educated woman, so how would she know these various languages? Um, I just, uh, the name Vril, they named their own secret society off of a famous science fiction book uh, by Edward Lighton, The Coming Race. So, um, again, kind of like uh, Scientology, where we, you've got a science fiction writer who who writes an entire religion. Well, uh, Hitler was following a secret society named after a science fiction book called The Coming Race. I, I just find all of this stuff very interesting. Again, what is fiction, what's not? Yeah, it does seem like the lines are pretty much blurred. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and that's what the issue is, because you really, it's almost like, you know, anyone that has interest in this stuff just cannot get a, uh, a hold of what they, what's real, because then you turn around and there's another aspect to it, you know? And it really is hard for anyone, especially the, the guys that are listening right now, because it's some of the stuff that we talk about all the time is that how do you, how do you pick that one that resonates as, as being true, or at least as close to the truth as you can get? And it really becomes so muddled and it, it's hard to do. And I can imagine that your, your, your books in a way kind of help you get through all of that and, and come to a conclusion of what you feel might be the direction that, you know, conspiracy A really came from and where it's going. Absolutely. You're a hundred percent right. It does seem to organize my thoughts a little better. Um, because it is hard. What is the most, I mean, to me, the, whenever I hear a, a crappy ex, explanation of something, that's the, when my brain goes ding, 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 ding. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. I don't know if that, is that how it is for you too? Yeah. You know what? A lot of it is driven by what's being published now. You know, it's not mainstream media, but there's a lot of publications out there that publish new stories regarding these conspiracies. And you go from one to the next, one month to the next, and they tend to evolve. But then, you know, like I said, you look for that core meaning behind it. And that's where it kind of gets confusing, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. So you've got a new text coming out, uh, a new book coming out. How can people, uh, I got some links in the description itself, but how can people reach you? I, I don't know if you take any, uh, have any conversations with people in general about these conspiracies oh. or how can they interact with you? Uh, absolutely. Actually, I do. I have a, a Facebook, uh, page, Dina Ray Books, and, um, people drop in all the time and leave a message. Um, that's one way I, um, have a blog, Dina Ray's Right Stuff, and that's W R I T E Right Stuff dot blogspot dot com. And um, through comments, um, some people will even email me. Uh, I've definitely communicated a lot. Um, if anybody would ever like to um, guest blog, I'm totally open for that. I have uh, people who who write articles all the time, and um, they have their own conspiracy ideas. I'm, I'm more, I'm, I'm very interactive with other, um, people who are interested in conspiracy. I'm very open. Um, I don't agree with everything, but, um, I'm, I'm open to hearing different ideas. And if someone wants to use my blog as a platform, they're more than welcome. Uh, I just, I really enjoy, uh, learning, I guess. That is probably, what I find the most fun. Uh, and you know, I'm going to keep doing it until I die and Gotta keep on exploring it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I love your show. Uh, I love, uh, I love listening to radio shows, uh, especially ones like these, like yours and a uh, conspiracy show and, um, coast to coast, all of those. I just love that kind of stuff. Uh, I love the alternative 
take on things. I love, uh, I, I do believe that aliens exist. I love hearing about that. So that's kind of, kind of where I'm at. So Dina, I, I guess I'm going to put you on the spot here. If there's one conspiracy that for you really resonates with what you believe is true, you know, there's, there's a lot more truth to it than there is, you know, a theory. Which one would that be? Well, I think the mother load of most conspiracies come from new, new world order. That is like the umbrella of about 90 percent of conspiracy theory. I, I really do. I, maybe that sounds cliche, but, uh, I mean, even when we're getting into alien conspiracy, well, again, they, ha- there's a lot of conspiracies that suggest that they want, um, to rule the world. So, uh, I think that would probably be my favorite of all of them. Um, I do like to, um, I do follow politics very closely and I do like to, whenever, um, a politician does something that is not good for their country, but good for the world. So in the, at least in their mind's eye, I immediately like to, you know, label them uh, an elitist, a, a globalist, a part of the New World Order, a Bilderberger, all of that. Uh, that's fun for me. Um, again, I like the Antarctica hollow earth theory. I find that uh, real fascinating. Um, <laughs> the man on the moon, Stanley Kubrick, is probably one of my favorite theories. I don't know if you've heard that one. Yes, actually, we talked about it not too long ago. Yeah, where he, he filmed the whole thing for mm-hmm. the government and then mm-hmm. he went, uh, and then he, and then he mysteriously died in the middle of that movie, Eyes Wide Shut, when, uh, you know, they're making out that movie about secret societies. Kind of weird. Had a heart attack. Uh, when, he, I don't know if you know that movie with Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise. Yeah, that was a fascinating and weird movie in a way. Well, he, he died in the middle of it. So we never got to see the real ending. We got to see the fill in ending. So I wonder if he lived what that movie would have looked like. I, I, I I'm, I'm going on a limb here and I'm going to hypothesize that he, he didn't just die. He was murdered, but that's. Oh, that's you just started just another me. conspiracy. Is that a new conspiracy? <laughs> <laughs> Um, that one, I, I love that one. Of course, nine eleven is, um, you know, especially the Pentagon story is, uh, uh, a good one to, you know, spin about. Um, and, uh, and of course the whole reason for getting into the middle East through, um, you know, the war with Iraq and Afghanistan is never made any sense to me. Um, I mean, if you were going to go to war, wouldn't you go to war with Saudi Arabia since most of the the terrorists were supposedly from Saudi Arabia? But, you know, I, I guess I could spin that one forever, as do many other people. Um, but, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of good ones out there. And, uh, oh, I got to throw this one in for you because it's pretty recent. Um, when Hillary Clinton was running for president, she said on one of those talk shows that if she was elected, she would tell the world about the alien stuff that she found, you know, in the secret presidential library. I don't know if you remember that. Yes. We actually played a clip of that at one point. Well, wouldn't she know about that anyway? Her husband was president. So that was a little disingenuous. Um, I mean, if I was president, that'd be the first thing that I would do. And then I tell my wife about it or I tell my husband about it. Um, so, but you know, that kind of, if she would have kept on that, I think she might maybe would have won because I, I would have loved to, you know, get some information on all of that from, uh, you know, top secret sources, but obviously that didn't happen. Um, I got, I, I, I'm rambling. I'm sorry, man. No, it's all right. <laughs> Do any of these like, uh, kind of shake you to your core, you know, your core beliefs? Do they like kind of rattle you in any way? Well, um, one that, that kind of picked up a little bit of steam not too long ago was the, the murder of that Seth Rich, that, um, 
that aide to Clinton that one, um, who got killed. He was in a bar and then he um, called his girlfriend. It's like three o'clock in the morning and then he gets gunned down. Do you remember this one last year? Yeah, I remember reading something about it, but I wasn't clear what the connection was. The, they won't play anything about it on Fox News and they won't play anything about it on CNN. But if you, you know, you look at other news sources, um, all of a sudden, th- this is a great conspiracy theory. Donna Brazil called up the police about all of this. And then the attending doctor was relieved and told to go home. He was supposed to live from the gunshot wounds. And then they told the doctor who was treating him to go home. And then he died right at, I mean, there is all kinds of, um, this is shrouded in conspiracy. And, um, again, we're not hearing any of this on regular news channels for some unbeknownst reason. This to me is a very, uh, interesting murder and nobody wants to talk about it. So, Dina, we're at the last three minutes of our show today. Any last words you want to leave people with when it comes to, you know, just uh, researching conspiracies the way you do and, and finding that, uh, that middle road? Well, I guess I'm a little bit obsessive compulsive about it, which, um, <laughs> is, you know, um, makes me self proclaimed, uh, as I like to call myself. Um, I would, my advice to anybody is do not take the news at face value. That I think is the biggest, um, whatever channel you watch, don't take it at face value. Think about, um, what could possibly really be going on in the world and what they're trying to mask with these little ped piddly he said she said stories and uh i think that that's probably i hope is the biggest walk away well dina thank you for joining us today taking us through the uh the process of dealing with conspiracies and you've had some good ones so hopefully we'll get to hear from you again in the future manny thanks so much for having me on Thank you for joining us. You have a great day. You too. All right, there you go. That was Dina Ray. Dina, thank you for joining us. A fellow Texan like Ronnie Dawson. She is here. She's writing books. She's exploring conspiracies. And like she says, you know, it is really difficult to get through all of the craziness that come with conspiracies But we all know, when you have a story that's so fantastic, somewhere in the middle, somewhere in the core of that story lies a shred of truth. This is why we talk about this stuff, because we have to find a way to dig through all of the nonsense and make it into where you can find that little hair, that little pin, that little speck of truth. It might be microscopic, but it's in there somewhere. And it's waiting for you to discover it. And this is why we have so many different people coming on now. Because eventually they will help us get to where we need to be. A post-interview conversation with Dina regarding the Vril brought me to the Czech Republic girls. And I know, I know a lot of you out there don't feel really good about that story. But their story is similar to the Vril. And if Hitler's people believed in the Vril and their ability to contact E.T., why can't the Czech Republic girls? This is Manny Moonraker, and I'm signing out. Check you out on Tuesday with some UFO news as we continue to bust rubber dickers wherever we find them. Ciao.